Number seven, Julian Simpson. After a night out in New York City in November of 2017, Australian diplomat Julian Simpson returned to the apartment building where he was staying in Manhattan's Lower East Side. 30-year-old Simpson, who served as the second secretary to the UN for Australia, and his wife had had dinner with friends before the group returned to the Clinton Street residence. They went up to the building's wraparound roof deck to enjoy views of the Empire State Building, which at the time was lit up in rainbow colors in honor of Australia's same-sex marriage vote. As recounted by those at the scene, Simpson then climbed to a higher roof landing where he began swinging a female friend around. The woman's 24-year-old husband confronted Simpson about the gesture after they'd all gone back inside his apartment on the balcony the diplomat told the man he'd meant no harm and then reportedly said, I will prove it that you can trust me. Let's play the trust game. It involved Simpson leaning from the edge of the seventh floor balcony and trusting the other man to catch him before he fell. The diplomat sat on the railing and started falling backwards while facing the apartment. The other man stretched his arms to grab him, but Simpson slipped and plummeted to a second floor landing. He was taken to Mount Sinai Beth Israel Hospital where he was later pronounced dead. The police reported that no foul play was suspected and attributed the incident to drunken misadventure, while noting that all of those they'd interviewed at the scene exhibited a strong odor of alcohol. Number six, Ashley Wadsworth. In 2020, Canadian teenager Ashley Wadsworth had begun talking online with Jack Seppel, an English man in his early 20s. A romance blossomed and in November of 2021, Wadsworth flew to the UK on a six-month tourist visa to meet Seppel in person for the first time and to stay with him. The teen had never left Canada before but trusted Seppel enough to make the trip. By multiple accounts, the relationship was off to a promising start and the couple visited dozens of tourist hotspots including Buckingham Palace and Big Ben in London. Wadsworth had also joined Seppel and his family on a visit to the historic town of Rye in East Sussex. The young woman, who'd converted to the Church of the Latter-day Saints at age 18, was also reported to have wanted to share her faith with Seppel. Problems arose, the nature of which remained unspecified, and in early 2022, 19-year-old Wadsworth had called her family saying that she was no longer happy staying in Britain. They reportedly paid for her return ticket to Canada, and she was due to depart in late January, then on February the 1st. Essex authorities responded to reports of a domestic disturbance at Seppel's Chelmsford home. It was there that they found Wadsworth, who'd been fatally stabbed in the chest. Seppel was arrested and charged with her murder. During a March appearance at Chelmsford Crown Court, the 23-year-old only spoke to confirm his name and didn't enter a plea while a provisional trial date was set for September the 5th. Number 5. Yevgenia Leontieva Harrowing footage that emerged from Russia in the fall of 2021 showed a woman plummeting to her death during an organized rope-flying jump in Kazakhstan. In the clip, picked up by multiple media outlets, 33-year-old Yevgenia Leontieva was being fixed into a harness by an organizer, while another man was heard off-camera saying, I love you, following a countdown. The mother of three calmly leaped from the roof of a hotel in Karaganda. An experienced jumper, she trusted that those in charge of the extreme stunt had taken the necessary steps towards ensuring her safety. Unfortunately, a cross line to which her rope was attached meant to break her fall and leave her suspended above the ground, either failed to hold her or wasn't secured. Screams from onlookers erupted after Leontieva plummeted over 80 feet, struck the concrete below and was then dragged for roughly 12 feet before ramming against a wall. The woman was taken to a local hospital where she underwent surgery for severe head injuries but was later pronounced dead. An investigation was launched to determine if the jumps organizers had been guilty of negligence. Preliminary reports from those at the scene suggested that the jump had been given the green light before an organizer had had time to secure the cross line to a nearby tree. Number 4. Richard Harper In May of 2021, a man from Bolton, England, was jailed for eight years after stabbing his best friend in the heart and nearly ending his life. 29-year-old Richard Harper had a history of mental health illness and his overall disposition was reported to have worsened with the COVID-19 lockdown. Axel Thomas, who'd been Harper's best friend for over a decade, was by his side as he struggled with depression and anxiety associated with the restrictions. The pair was in what the prosecution described as a support bubble and one day while Harper was out, Thomas went to his home and waited for him there. Harper returned in a severely inebriated state and continued drinking. After he saw a letter from neighbors complaining about his behavior, Harper became extremely loud and upset. In what was reported as a last-ditch effort to calm him down, 
Thomas slapped him in the face. It triggered an extremely violent outburst from Harper, who then punched and kicked Thomas repeatedly, asking him to leave. Fearful of what his friend might do next, the latter decided to remain and managed to lock himself in the bathroom. Harper forced the door open and threw a wine bottle at Thomas's head, which cut him below the ear and dropped him to the floor. Harper kicked the man several more times before grabbing a knife from the kitchen and then stabbing him in the chest. A neighbor called the emergency services, who rushed Thomas to the hospital, where he had life-saving surgery after the blade had pierced his heart. In the immediate aftermath, while addressing the arresting officers, Harper made the worrisome claim that he'd felt a buzz during the attack. He was subsequently charged with attempted murder. Number 3. Megan Milner In 2016, Canadian woman Megan Milner adopted two massive American bully dogs, a brother and sister, which would become the main focus of her time and affection. Milner, an animal lover, never neglected or mistreated her dogs and by all accounts, the relationship was one of complete trust. According to Milner's mother, the dogs, a breed commonly described as extra-large pit bulls, seemed kind and loved her. The male American bully, however, had a documented history of aggression. He'd bitten another dog at an off-leash park in 2017, and the following year attacked a woman who subsequently needed to be hospitalized. Milner considered giving him up, but ultimately decided against it. On June the 9th of 2020, the RCMP received reports of a possibly deceased woman found in a ditch off Wittenberg Road. The authorities arrived at the scene and the body was subsequently identified as 38-year-old Milner. She'd been mauled to death by her male dog, but the attack wasn't witnessed and the factors behind it remained unclear. The police then issued a warning that a dangerous dog, which they named as a pit bull, was on the loose. One of Milner's neighbors heard the news and purposefully ran the dog over with his car in the aftermath. He wasn't charged as it was deemed he'd acted in the interest of public safety. The female American bully had never shown signs of aggression and she was eventually rehomed. Today's topic was requested by Fival Dremwich and Kai Maraga. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Skylar Nice After midnight on July the 6th of 2012, West Virginia teen Skylar Nice snuck out of her Star City home to meet up with two friends from University High School. Sheila Eddy and Rachel Shove picked her up in the former's car and they drove to Pennsylvania. Nice and the other high school sophomores used to be inseparable according to friends and family, but they'd recently had a falling out. Two days earlier, one of Nice's tweets read, I can never completely trust you, and was believed to be alluding to the recent conflict. She was eventually convinced to sneak out by Eddie and shove through a series of texts and phone calls. Nice was subsequently reported missing and in the preliminary stages of their investigation, the authorities believed she was a runaway. They determined that she'd been picked up in Eddie's sedan, but upon being interviewed by the police, the team maintained she dropped her off an hour later. Suspicions had begun to mount that she and Shelf knew more about their friend's disappearance than they'd initially revealed. Then, in early January of 2013, the latter suffered a nervous breakdown and confessed to the authorities that she and Eddie had stabbed Nice to death. When asked why they'd killed her, Shove reportedly replied, we just didn't like her, adding that they didn't want to be friends with her anymore. The teens had been planning their friend's murder for months, particularly when they were in science class together. On the night, they stopped on the side of the road across the Pennsylvania state line with the stated intention of smoking marijuana together. Eddie and Shove claimed they'd forgotten to bring a lighter and Nice volunteered to retrieve hers from the car. When her back was turned, the teens counted to three, their pre-planned signal, and began stabbing her repeatedly. A chilling tweet later posted by Eddie on April the 1st of 2013 read, We really did go on three. They then covered the body with rocks, branches and dirt before fleeing the scene. After confessing, Shove led investigators to the location of Nice's remains. Following a plea agreement for second-degree murder, she was sentenced to 30 years in prison, with parole available after 10. Eddie pleaded guilty to first-degree murder in 2014 and was sentenced to life in prison with parole eligibility after 15 years. Number 1. Lenise Escobar In 2017, five teens from New York were convinced by 17-year-old Lenise Escobar to meet up and smoke in a wooded area of Central Islip. Michael Lopez, Justin Yvicura, Jorge Tigre, Jefferson Villalobos, and Alexander Ruiz were then ambushed at the rendezvous by over a dozen members of the notorious MS-13 gang. While covering their faces with sweatshirts, the assailants ordered the young men to get on the ground, and what prosecutors would subsequently describe as a frenzy of violence ensued. 
The young men were beaten, bludgeoned with tree limbs and hacked to death with machetes. Only Ruiz survived the savage attack by running for his life. MS-13, also known as La Mara Salvatrucha, originated in Los Angeles in the 1970s with the initial intention of protecting Salvadorian immigrants from other criminal elements in the city. It grew into an international criminal organization known for its cruelty and recruitment of young members. MS-13 has been linked to dozens of killings on Long Island and the Central Islip murders stemmed from the victims allegedly disrespecting the gang on social media following her arrest. Escobar pleaded not guilty to multiple charges of racketeering, with her lawyers claiming that she didn't know the victims would be attacked. The statement would be disputed by the prosecution, who maintained that Escobar, nicknamed Diablita or Little Devil, was trying to portray herself as the victim. Evidence indicated that she'd not only bragged to her boyfriend about her role in the killings, but was also allegedly responsible, along with another juvenile female suspect, for instigating them. She'd done so by finding photos of the victims, who weren't affiliated with the MS-13, flashing its gang signs on social media and then showing them to actual members. Six others responsible for the massacre have been arrested by March of 2022, while Escobar's trial is ongoing and she faces up to life in prison for her crimes. Thanks for watching. Would you rather give up the internet for a month or trust your least reliable friend with all of your social media communication? Let us know in the comments section below.